morning. I'm Reverend Avni Christian, and I welcome you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, we continue our sermon series called Mountains. Oh, the places that you have gone. So we are looking at the summer settings. Uh, in summer, any of the summer, maybe not this year, maybe ne- uh, last year, or maybe uh, two or five years ago, that you have gone to some places and uh, remember what God has uh, showed you through that places. Last week we talked about mountains, and this week we're going to talk about lakes and river uh, and streams. So I hope that you will enjoy today. Remember that we are going to have a a, a picnic next week. If you are attending uh, in-person service uh, uh, next week, remember we will be not be having our service at our facility uh, at uh, at, um, Washington Street. But we will be going uh, to Reed Kipler Park um, at 10 a.m. with potluck and obviously having the worship outside outdoor so if you are visiting uh, West Chicago or if you have people uh, or friends who would like to join please invite them again it's at Reed Kip- uh, Kipler Park it's in North Pavilion just by uh, the uh, cemetery so I hope that you will join us again um, next week let us now begin our service as we uh, center our hearts and minds and listen uh, to what Patty uh, is going to play for us
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. continue our sermon series on seeing the summer settings of our uh, of our vacations as we go so today we're going to talk about lakes and river and stream and I'm going to read uh, to you from Psalm 1 uh, the first uh, uh, chapter uh, uh, one so Psalm uh, chapter 1 says this Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of the scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They were like trees planted by the streams of the water, which yield their fruit in its sense season and their leaves do not wither in all that they do they prosper the wicked one not so but are like scaff that has wind drives away therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous for the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
So the psalmist in this first chapter talks about trees planted by the streams of water, which yields their fruit in its own season. This psalmist is talking about this wonderful things that God does. Those people who are blessed are the people uh, who actually has a three actions that they do. In our first very sentence like the our first wary words it says this happy are those who do not follow or walk uh, and take the advice but take the path that seen as treads or sit that is to walk and then stand and then sit it's just three things, the three actions that these people do, the people who are blessed, they do this three action. They walk and then they do not stand and then they sit and meditate. And that's what this, uh, this three actions leads them to be a blessed student of Torah, a diligent student of Torah. It says that delight is in the law of the Lord and on God's law, the meditate day and night. That's how to uh, attain a rich yield of uh, spiritual fruit. Plan yourself deep in God's word. That is what it says. It says that if you are... Um, uh, if you want to be a blessed one, if you want a favor from God, if you want, uh, if you if you want to follow the path of righteousness, then these three things need to be done. Then you can be planted by the streams of the water, planted in the Word of God. A scripture is far more than a matter of intellectual rigor, although that surely does play a part. There is an accent still. Um, a element to it as well as a matter of identity. What this uh, scripture today talks about is a matter of identity. Where do you identify yourself uh, into? Where do you see yourself in the centrum uh, uh, of Christianity? In, a, uh, in, in where the God is leading? The Christian storyteller for modern time uh, uh, was a Jewish priest from India by the name of Anthony D. Mello. Now, one of D. Mello's many parables is uh, about a woman who was in a coma, slowly dying. As the woman lay on her sick bed, she had a sudden feeling that she had been taken up to heaven was standing before uh, the judgment seat. So uh, she was dying, she was in coma, and all of a sudden she felt that as though the, she's now in, uh, uh, in front of the judgment seat of God. And she's standing there in, from, in front of that judgment seat. She could see nothing. Um, she described and, and said that I could see nothing, only clouds of dark uh, of smoke. But then oh, out of the blowing smoke came a voice and it asked one simple question, who are you? Not knowing what else to say, um, not knowing how to really answer that question because it's a four for it has so many facets of things. So she turned to the answer she had used often in her life. She says, I am the wife of the mayor. She replied. Now that voice said, I did not ask you whose wife you are, but who you are. So the woman said, I'm the mother of four children. She continued. Again, the same uh, voice came out and said, well, I did not ask whose mother you are. I did not ask, ask how many children do you have. I ask you, simple question, who are you? And then she paused 
And then she said, I am a school teacher. Now again, this voice has a little bit, uh, has an edge to it now. And said that I did not ask you your profession, but who are you? And so it went. The same question repeated over and over and over again. And but no matter what the woman replied, her answer was unacceptable. She tried all different ways that she can to answer that simple question, who she is. So finally, she thought to try another answer. I am a Christian, she said. She thought this is a good answer and I guess uh, I am right in front of God. Maybe he wants to listen that answer. And so she said, I am a Christian, she said. But that too was unacceptable. Again, the question was, I did not ask what your religion is, but who are you? And then she said, I am the one who went to the church every week and always, always helped the poor and the needy. <laughs> she turned again to the outreach ministry, maybe the ministries that the, uh, the judgment God is leading. Again, the wife says, I did not ask you what you did, but who are you? D. Mello who wrote this parable concludes his parable by observing that the woman evidently failed the examination for she was not able to answer a simple question about who she was and so she was sent back to earth hallelujah soon after she awakes from her coma and resumes her life but something is different in the way that she is leading her life. Something has changed about her. From that day forward, the woman resolves to discover who she is. And that the storyteller concludes in this uh, uh, parable uh, makes all the difference so who are you really is the question of today's psalm who are you strike away all those layers of you have spent your life carefully strike away all the layers of who uh, what work, what experience, all the builds up, all those labels, those titles, those definitions, those uh, strive away all of that and what's left. If you strive, like if I strive being a mom, being a, a wife, being a pastor, being, a, you know, a, a community builder, or then who am I then left? What is the essential core of myself or yourself that God sees? That is what happens when we are as a tree planted by the streams of water. We discover who we are. Planted by water. So for, it says that you are planted by the stream, planted by the water. For the rabbinical student um, and for the Christian as well, the answer to the question of, uh, of the essential core um, uh, of who we are has to do so much with what we do in studying scripture uh, as for whose sake we do it so it's more of what we do in studying scripture as for who whose sake 
we do it. Psalm 1 begins on a positive note. It says, happy are those. In some translation, uh, it says, blessed are those. Uh, it blessed, uh, it doesn't much, uh, much a difference, but it right away talks about someone who have not worked hard, but has been a blessed one, who had God's favor already. Happiness and blessedness, they mean much the same thing. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the sinners. Now, there's a no-brainer about it. We do know that we are the ones who are happy, who do not follow the advice, who wants to be on the side of the bad guys. Nobody wants to be. No kidding watching Star Wars, and we don't want to be a part of the yearn to be an Imperial Storm trop, uh, Trooper. So uh, I, I don't think so, that we want to be on the bad side. Um, happy are those. Uh, but then there is another action it also says, but it's not just to stay away, but it's also said to stand against. It also has the advice of, of this wicked never arrives in such an easy way. It doesn't say that happy are those who reject the advice of evil. But there is one action that is needed to Walk on the path of righteousness. Walking on the path of righteousness means obedience. Reading scriptures, that is a good thing. Following scripture is a very good thing. But also obedience in God is very important. And that is what it says. The obedience that walks not walks but sits with and, and also walk and meditate day and night and then with obedience that they follow being righteousness you know if you are planted in the tree and it says in that in our scripture it says that when you are planted you give the fruit yes you do because there's a streams of water this water is a giving of god who nourishes but it also appeals to the things where where when you are planted by the streams of river when you are planted by the lake you know, when you are planted by uh, by by this flowing water you your you become more fruitful and once you get fruitful there is one thing that it says very specifically that you give fruit according to the season I was I will listen there you don't give fruits um, without the season that you don't get dry when there is spring you give fruit according to the season. And that is very important for us to understand. We give fruit according to the seasons. We give fruit because God allows us to be a part of His righteousness. And that is how we get fruit. The God's obedience is one of the biggest thing that can ever happen when we walk in that righteousness path. And so today when you go out and see all the lakes or rivers or if you go down the pound uh, by your, um, if you are going to the Fox River uh, uh, or if you are walking and fishing maybe, remember these words. Take this word with you, Psalm chapter 1. Take these words and see what this springs of valley does for us. See how God chooses us, how we choose God. And by choosing Him, we become, uh, we become His people. And so let, it be, let us be uh, the people who are planted uh, by the water. Follow the advice of this righteousness. Let's be the mindful of just what constitutes 
wickedness but also mindful that to stay away from it we need to be planted by the scriptures we need to be planted by the waters of God's grace we need to be planted by the waters of love and that is what we are called to do amen so I invite you to go today out Find your time, your space where you can be connected to nature. Very few times are left before the fall and the winter comes when we are still enjoying this wonderful summer. So I invite you to take that time. Open your Bible. Take your Bible or maybe on your phone. Open it to Psalm 1 and read it loud to whoever is passing by without even thinking about it. Read loudly and understand that you are the blessed one because the scripture is yours. Because when you read scripture, scripture reads you. Our church is sustained through this wilderness time by your faithful generosity. You can continue to send your offerings by mail, or for more information about setting up an electronic funds transfer, contact Roberta Kent or Pastor Abney.
gives us the water of grace. Go in the name of our Jesus Christ, who came on this earth to share the water of love. And go in the name of the Holy Spirit that springs out and spreads the living God into us. In the name of Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.